Daveness are renowned for. They're a B Corp, which they're the only professional hair colour brand that are. Now, sustainability isn't just about natural, um, natural products. Sustainability is about your carbon footprint. So it's about manufacturing, it's about recyclables, it's about transportation, it's about it's so many things that you don't necessarily think about. And it was absolutely fascinating to get to know the guys and listen to the story and learn some of these facts. I'm going to share that with some of you as we go along. Some of you will already know that. Some of you might be new to the brand. And so we're going to explore that a little bit. But we're going to do a super soft summer paint on this look here. I'm going to raise the, um, this down a little bit for you, this, this camera, so we can get to see that. Now, this is a longer hair. It's a lighter base and we put in it some curtain bangs in there. So it's gonna be a really nice, easy paint for you to do in the salon, super, super commercial. But this is what she looks like when she's done. Hold on a second. Pop her down here. And here she is. This is what we're going for today. So it's a super soft, it's really fresh. It's lovely through there, lovely light pieces with a curtain band that's been accentuated there. It's a lovely piece of pop through there. We've got a nice bit of pop through the face. There, you can see that there. So these lovely tones. And she was toned with Daveness View, which is a demi-permanent uh, color. And it looks like this. Now this one is really, really cool. That's what it looks like. It's liquid, and if you know me, you know me all the way along, I love liquid glazes, I always have done, so when I hear the word liquid glaze, I get very, very excited, because it has this kind of sheerness to it, that's super, I always think liquids and liquid gels are more sheer, and it's like if you think about lipsticks and lip glosses, it gives a, a lipstick is heavier, and I love that sort of richness and expensive feel of something lighter, which is really cool. It's acidic, which is even better, for us, because I love that, because it closes the cuticle, but the developer's acidic as well, I believe, which is really, really interesting. And here's the fun fact about it, that after 28 days in the water, 98% of the product is biodegradable, which I just thought was fascinating when I heard that. When Margaret told me that, I was kind of blown away by it, because you don't really always get to know what happens once it goes down the sink. And I thought that was really, really interesting. I thought it was really cool. So this is the finished look, but let's enough of that. Let's get into, let's get into it. Let's get into painting her. So here she is, my lovely assistant, John, who is no longer my assistant. He's, um, John Alfred is going on the floor very soon, just as I leave for America. And um, he did these cuts for me and the styling, which I'm really, really pleased about. I'm gonna raise this doll head up a little bit for you. There we go. I think that's good enough. She feels like she's central. Do we need that a little bit higher? Possibly. Let's just do that. Easily done. Even though I did three, three checks on this in the way. It is a nice look, isn't it? I think it's really beautiful. So here we go. I've pre-mixed the product. Um, so I like a clay consistency, as you all know. This is 75 grams of the uh, 40 volume because I want to get the maximum lift with it. So that's up to eight levels. And I've done 50 grams of the product and that's what it's like. And you know that if it's like a cream cheese and you can paint with it, it's gonna make my life so much easier. It's gonna make your life so much easier because it's easier to paint with, right? Um, this is really funny. These scales, Margaret, you'll laugh at this. I was using this scale and I'm like, why won't they work? Why won't they work? Why won't they measure it? And then Margaret had told me a trick that they've got that on top of them and I'd forgotten it and then I found out and I was like, that's why they don't work. So that, I just thought that was funny. Anyway, enough of me and my humour. Let's go in. So we're gonna go with the centre part so we can accentuate these curtain bangs. We're going to part from the crown to the back of the ear. We're gonna keep this really, really simple because what you want to be able to do in the salon is offer these quick, fresh services that are gonna get the clients out there looking fantastic, looking supernatural, which is of course what I love, and um, with a bit more pop on those ends, in a commercial setting. 
So that's how I'm parting it. So I'm basically just doing three sections. As you can see, we're pretty much one length here. So you don't need to do a full head on there, but we certainly want pop in there. I see quite a few people are laughing because it's happened to all of them with the scales. Madness, hey? I was like, there's something wrong and I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna take my section through here and I'm gonna make sure that we haven't that's nice. So I'm gonna show you this so you can have a good look. Clip everything out of the way, keep everything really nice and neat and clean. I believe that is really important. And we're just gonna go just above the exhibital bone in a slight deep V through there. And we're gonna make sure that we paint all this. I'm going to be doing a super soft paint, but what I'm also gonna do is a little bit of palm painting for you through the bottom so we get more pop, okay? And I'm gonna show you how I do that. So first of all, this brush, never goes in the bowl, this is the brush that I paint with. And here's my board, and I'm going to just lean across, take a bit of product, there, just like so. And then, because I'm professional-like, I'm gonna put my gloves on. We've done this, you will need gloves. I've also got myself a little white, a uh, little wet towel just by my side, um, because I wanna be able to wipe my hands, because this can get a little messy. We don't want that. We want to make it look as clean as everything it can possibly be. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we're going to do, for those of you who know me, um, you'll know you'll know some of this. But for those guys who are new to this, who have come from, across from Davines, I just want to showcase to you: we wouldn't take a section in a slice, and the reason we wouldn't do that is because we don't have enough hair at the end. So that's kind of through a foil. What we want to do, and we're going to come in here, is we're going to take a scoop, like so. And all this hair underneath, we're not going to paint that. We're literally, I've got a little trolley by my side as well. Let's get that in. So, clays are wonderful, and a clay-like consistency is wonderful, because it's much easier to paint with. And we're going to go here, and look at my brush. We're just going to go like that. Lovely, put a load more on and then start feathering up. We're gonna take it higher because we want to see some of that. We want it to go further to the root. The more that you paint away from the root, the less the client's going to come in. So we want to encourage the clients to come back. And we're gonna feather. Like so, there we go. Start feeling that. Now, you wanna keep that tension tight through there until you've got the feather in here. So this part is important. Always take the light area and the highest area towards the face and just keep going over that until you feel there's enough product on there. What you shouldn't see is the hair underneath. And underneath, there's nothing there, right? This is a super soft sur surface paint um, and you're right there, the consistency is to die for. Just gonna drop that a little bit and then we go in. And we're just gonna saturate that end. And then I'm gonna go like this. And I'm just gonna work that through. Now by doing this, you're just gonna get a bit more pop underneath through those ends and you're pushing that product through that little bit more and it just gives you that edge. And you know how some of your blondes really want that extra bright piece through there? It works really well. A bit more product. Bring it down. And I'm going to put a bit more product on it. Again, layering that product on. If it's not white, it won't be light. And there's our first piece. Let's show that to you. There. Look at that. Whoa. Really nice. And the blend in there. And of course, the consistency of the product really helps with the blend. Yes, the live is going to be saved. Don't you worry. It's as long as I can save it. Let's get a bit more product on there. And that's it. And I'm going to leave my paddle down. And again, just repeat that this side. So underneath, scoop. 
load the product on, get a bit more, keep that tension tight. Now this is going to be beautiful, it's going to be soft, um, and then we're just going to cool it down with the 10 to 1 in the view. And that is going to be an iridescent ash, a level of a 10, which is always nice to have a level of a 10 with a glaze, especially in this day and age, because so often when we're doing freehand work, everything is about the finish there. See how that just goes on? Really, really nice. Hi, everyone who's joining me just now, if you've come to the, come joined in. Uh, what we're doing tonight is we're doing a super soft paint. I'm working with Davines's Liberty Lightener. It's a clay-like consistency, but it gives you up to eight levels of lift. And make sure you go underneath to get that pop. Because what we want there is we want this pop on the ends. And basically you can just diffuse that with your finger, just like so, and bring that in. Really nice. Bit more product. Oh yes. Loving it. And then there. And we've got a little towel by our side and just wipe your fingers. So it's a really commercial look. And as you can see through there, we've got two pieces already. But if you stand back and you look at your work, you can see that something's missing here. And so what we want to do is just pop a little piece in there. Good to see everyone. I'm really happy to be here collaborating with Daviness. And I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna scoop out just those ends on this piece, which is nice. There. And again, load in the middle, then feather up load in the middle, then feather up, just so you get that lovely blend. That's it. And then we can pop our board down and here, and then just work that product through beautifully. That's nice. Lift it up. So you're moving around a little bit, so you need a little bit of space, especially if you're six foot three. And that's it. And that's our first section. What do you think? Do you like that? I like that. It looks really nice, right? And this is like a point where you could get your camera out and you could photograph it. And there's the blend. There's no need to foil it. There's no need to backcomb it. You've got all your blend just like so. And that's all in the way you hold your brush and you paint. Now I'm going to put a little bit of um, plastic wrap on that and just so you know this is made out of corn and it's biodegradable. I found it in the USA and so I think it fits perfectly with the conversation about sustainability um, which is really neat. Hey, So we're going to go back and we're going to take our next section and again drop that down and still do it in that piece like so. Now the density of the hair is going to be the conversation about how thick your sections go. Um, if the hair's really, really fine, you're gonna put less in because you don't want to overwhelm the hair. If the hair is super, super thick, you might need to put more in, right? So again, it's like you have to kind of think the process through um, and you have to have a plan in your head before you start. If you get lost, take a step back, have a look at what you're doing, and kind of fix it there. There's no point just going through it and hoping for the best. Right, you've got the great product, using your Liberty Lightener, you know you've got a game plan, stay with it, and just adjust. So, as you can see here, we can see a couple of pieces popping through. There's a slight layer there now, and so it's gonna be really nice as we work up it. So let's get on with our next section. Let's go on to our next section. Cool, a bit more product. Remember, don't dunk your brush in the bowl. Just go to your board. Let's do this one here. Nice. And again, here we go. We're gonna take out that section. Let's bring her this way so you can see a bit better. That's good. And let's just move that out the way. 
Okay, and product on. And we're going to work up. And it's all about the angle that you hold the brush, right? So you've got the great product that's going to glide on the hair for you, which makes it the dream for me. But what you also want to do is you want to have tight tension. And this one's going to change shape slightly. We're going to go up both sides. Because nothing wants to be matchy-matchy. For those of you who know me, I'm always going to say that. And you see just no lines in here at all. We don't want that. Okay, that's good. And up here we go, pop a bit more in. Let's just move this back so you can see there. Take the back of your finger and just mush that through in a sort of feathering action and that helps and then you come down and you take that section. Again, putting more product on, working it through. And we go like so, that's good. Right. Making sure that you can't see any lines on the section. There, that's nice. Bring that in and then you can see there, and that's two-sided. Really nice. And that's going to give us two highlights through here and then a feathered piece through there so there could be more depth coming into a brighter piece at the bottom. So it's just about thinking what it's going to look like when it's finished. Let's pop on a bit more product. And we'll take this side. So I tend to work side to side and then in the middle. So a deep, the, this deepness here, and you can see it there, means that this hair at the bottom gets brighter, more pop to it. Let's turn this around so you can see. Come in like that, push that out like that. There, nice. And again, we're going to balance this side off. Here we go. Just keep that tension tight. Got to keep it tight. That's it. Feather. If you see something you're not quite sure of, if you don't like, just take the back of your tint brush and that just feathers that out. Really, really, really simple. But you can see that the tension is tight all the way through. You enjoying this, everyone? I hope so. And we go up. And then feather that through, a bit more product. Here we go. And then bring it through, push the product through with your fingers. And this is the palm painting. Palm painting materialized in about 2010. And um, this balayage has been around since 1974. Um, and palm painting gives you that little bit, definitely that more saturation through the bottom where sort of as times change and fashions change, people want a little bit more lightness through that bottom and that gives that to you. So, there, see? But again, as we look at both sides, we see that something's missing in the middle. So we just want to definitely level that up. <clears throat> a bit more product. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm just going to scoop that out. And you can see there it's still a scoop, which is important. And we're going to just balance the middle out. I love balance. I'm not so interested in symmetry most of the time. We'll talk about symmetry when we get to the front. Because that's where we need it. There. Nice, 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 nice. And again, you see that through there, you can see how the pieces fit in. It's like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And as you're going along, it all starts to take shape. We don't want any lines on here, we want it all nice and soft. And then we go here and um, add a bit more. And then just feather that through and then bring through and saturate. And it's the saturation at the bottom where you really push that product in. And for those people who are always kind of nervous about 
you know, when I just saturated with a brush, this gives you this gives you a sense of a bit more security because as you look underneath, you can see that that's blended through there. Okay, is the lighting okay? I kind of feel it feels a bit dark. Can everyone see? The lighting's changing so quickly in here. Just let me know that you can see all nicely. You're getting lots of hearts on there, so it looks good. Great stuff. Okay, so we're going to use this again. This is um, it's called Remade. It's all recyclable bubbles. It's great. Made out of corn, which I thought was fascinating. Okay, and then we'll go there. We'll just lay that on top. So whatever kind of plastic wrap you're going to use, you just want to lay it on top. You don't want to squash it all down because that kind of makes lines and everything everywhere. I'm glad you think the lighting's good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> but because this is not a clay, it has a clay-like consistency, we want to do semi-closed. We want to put plastic wrap on it to protect the layers underneath because the top of it won't seal over. So that's why we do this, okay? Now, going on to the next section, I'm going to lower this. I'm just going to go boom. boom. So you're not doing, you don't need to do a lot. So I think a tendency for me is whenever I'm teaching balayage is, and I've been teaching balayage for since the, the 90s in the USA, there is this tend, and so I've been around the block a few times, there's this tendency to want to put so much in. And we're super people pleasers and we're trying to put loads and loads in, but you actually lose the look. So less really truly is more, okay? And so really just think about it, think about the story. And you can see already those pieces are gonna lighten up through that. So I really like that. As I get towards the crown, I'm gonna go a little bit smaller in the sections because I don't want big chunks kicking out here. I want it a bit thicker underneath so that we can get the weight of blonde at the bottom and then a little bit softer. Let me just stir my product a bit more on the board and here we go right here there we go you can see that through there I think we just need to lower her a little bit oh that's it really nice and let's bring her back so you can see and again the lighter side towards the root and that product just glides on for me. Um, and I did on Jack Howard and Friends, I've done this look on a brunette. And we used Liberty Lightener. And it is lovely. The lift was really pretty <coughs> for me, where I wanted it to be. Um, I didn't want it to be a level 22. I know level 22 doesn't exist, but those of you who know me know I sort of rail against anything that's too too fake looking, not natural, uh, but I got some lovely lift on a dark base with this, so I feel confident that to use this on darker bases and lighter bases. Um, obviously your glaze, uh, your toner, your gloss, whatever you want to call it, your photo finish, is what's going to be the most important, because that's where you're going to neutralise the undercoat. So glazing is a massive part of our story these days, whereas in you know, when I trained, glazing was always something that you did if it had gone wrong, which uh, is not the case anymore. Because pre-lighteners, of course, just reveal undercoat. So we want to be looking at semis, demis, maybe permanent colours sometimes to tone with. Let's lift that section up. <coughs> Let's paint that underneath. There we go. Feather that in. Bring it through. So yeah, so glazing is super, super important um, because we want to neutralize all the undercoats. All undercoats are warm. So for any client that says, I don't want a, a toner, I don't want a glaze, I'm like, well, I, there are very few women that I would say in my years of experience that wouldn't need a glaze. I can think of one particular woman I look after, um, but the rest all need it. So let's base our glazing and our toning on what the client needs, not the pricing of it. So build the price into it. There we go. 
that's really nice and we want to do the other side and again just take that section here a bit more and we're going to paint that let's have a look at what that looks like for you on camera there we go much better you'd think after all these lives now it would get used to it but I'm forever thinking about how you, the viewer, is going to see this and how, how much you're going to get from it. Because it's really important that if you're going to tune in for an hour, that you aren't just entertained, that you kind of get to see some great results, right? And you get to see good product. Um, really, there. And you see how smooth that just goes on. It's so pretty. So nice to work with. And then I just love the fact that I've got the up to eight levels. So every little level I can get, I'm like, whoa, now all clays on the market are only going to give you seven, up to seven. So I was fascinated by this conversation. And I was like, okay, I need to try this product. I need, I need to get to know the lightning range. And I really have been playing around with it and it's been fun and pleasurable. So I wouldn't be using anything that I didn't believe in, ever. That feels beautiful. If you've got your camera and you're in the salon at this point, there you go, take that picture, show your clients all your different paints, right? Because that is where the artistry is too. Great. Lots of people are requesting to go live with me tonight, which I think is cool, but I can't do that tonight. I'm afraid I've got lots that I've got to get through and we're at the half past mark so I'm going to keep going oh just pop that on there we go and then we're going to just drop this over and that's the very whole back section done in the salon this really is like 15 minutes work right if you've got your speed up but my focus to be my focus would be to begin with is to get a seamless blend once you've got that seamless blend then you can work on your speed so first of all we don't want any lines in there we want a beautiful blending in there right because that takes all the hard work out of the glazing you don't have to you don't have to do a root shadow or a root tap or anything because you've blended it beautifully so that's the focus first then speed afterwards now <clears throat> i will say that the product helps you speed up simply because the better the product lays on the hair, the better it glides on the hair, the easier it is to work. I mean, look, right? Boom. So I don't know how in years gone by I ever used anything that didn't have this kind of cream cheesy consistency. Um, I did and life was much harder and then it's all changed. I can do stronger paints. Look, you see, just boom. Really nice. Let's bring that middle piece in. It is super smooth. This is what's interesting about it, right? And let's just bring that up there like that. And then that felt there. So just play around with it, making sure that you feel good about your paint, right? The product will do a lot of work for you and it helps you. And then it's up to you about how you hold your brush, the tension, all those tips and things that I talk about constantly, really important for you to play with. And remember that your paint is never gonna be like my paint. My paint is never gonna be like your paint. Everyone's painting is as unique as their fingerprint. That's the wonderful thing about it. Okay, let's make sure that there's plenty of products on there and we've done that. A bit more on the ends and that's the back done. Nice, really smooth, really smooth, really pretty. I feel like I could stay here all night. There, I sort of go into the zone when I do that. Now, keep adding those questions to the question box. I hope that the team is really answering the questions. I can't see, I think they are. I know that the team are really excited about this as much as I am. And here we go. So the back section's done. Now, the product can be left on for up to 40 minutes. And like anything, I always kind of think, oh, 
I always kind of think that if you just bought, said to a client, I'll be back in 40, she'd probably be sat in the chair, slightly panicked, right? So I kind of think that it's only fair and professional to say to the client, the product can stay on for up to 40 minutes, but I'll be back in 20 and I'm going to just have a look at you. It takes the panic out of the client and it's just a really professional way to approach it. And it costs us nothing to sort of say that and make sure that the client feels really happy and secure. So that's what I would recommend. It works very well for me. And here we go. Now, this section is the front. We want, th we want this pop here. We've got this slightly curtain bang coming through. We really want to accentuate that. We want that to give us the pop. If you remember what she looks like, she's got a stronger piece through the front. So we want it to look like that. So we're going to play with this. And we'll start off here and I'm just going to take this clip and I'm just going to push it back like that. And that looks like this when you get real close. And it allows me to take those pieces out. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for your words of support. Now, I've got a little bit of cotton. I've got it already pre-cut. I'm just going to pop that in my hand like so. I'm going to take the first section and we're just going to take a slice. Oh. Well, we were. Let's do it now. Here we go. Take a slice. It's around the face. Make that slice happen if you can. And here we've got a couple of things that we need to do. There we go. Push that out of the way. So what we need to do here is we need to make sure that this piece here is bright. Here and here. So the peaks and troughs. And this one was laughing at me the other day about my terminology the peaks and troughs but the natural peaks and troughs of the hair we want to kind of paint so just going to keep that tension tight and see me go right into that corner let's bring her in a bit more yes look at that this is lovely to do it this way on a seven eight or nine see that there. That looks really nice. Let me put myself in so you can see that. Let's do a bit more. A bit more product. There we go. And that is going to give you a nice face frame. So I'm going to pop a bit more product on the ends. I'm going to do that. Let's bring her back. Go. Push a bit more in. Just have a look on the other side, make sure we've got that pop, a bit more product. Take a little bit of cotton and let's drop that down, just like so. There, first piece done. Let's walk, work up that hairline. So here, And do this piece here. So again, that's a slice. Let's bring that in for you to see. Oh, no. There. Cool. Feather that. And this because it's only a slice, so it's not going to be chunky. What it does is it gives you that beautiful, bold piece that you want. Let me just take too much product on there. That's great. I've shifted my uh, towel underneath me, so my assistant's just going to move that around for me. Hold on a sec. That's nice. A bit more product. There we go. See? And then just a bit of cotton and drop that under. And this is building into the curtain bang, which is really important. Thanks. And I'm gonna take this piece. I'm just gonna lift up the doll head a second as I just readjust that. 
That's perfect. Good. And then here, right at this front, we're just going to take that, and that's the piece that's going to drop, like so. Let's bring her down a little bit so you can see that better. This is the bit that's going to pop around the face. So this piece, we're going to... It's lovely. But we're also going to do the other side. And that just gives you a little bit more strength. And you can see, as I push that in, you get that. Right, and if you can imagine what that looks like dry, it's like just that delicate but stronger piece, which sounds weird, right? But it's three-dimensional. We're just going to run through and saturate a bigger piece of the section, like so. Right, let's do that a little bit more, a bit more product. Never be enough product, but you just keep going back to the board and getting more product. You don't keep dunking the brush in and a little bit of cotton underneath it, and that's that done. Wipe your hands down with your towel. Bring this out the way for a second. If the piece of cotton drops out, don't really worry about it too much. It's absolutely fine. And then, oh. We're just going to lay that. I've got a fan on as well, so. Let's see if that works a bit better. That's it. And just tuck that under slightly, and that just protects the client's face. That's it. Then we're going to go through to the side and turn that round for you. There. And then we're just going to work horizontally up. Just take a section like so, bring that around for you, and you can see that, and now we just want to start painting upwards, now this section allows us just to do the whole piece, oh, that's dropped off, don't worry about it, we'll put a bit more on in a second, sometimes that happens, lift that up, we just turn that fan off a little bit. Got a little remote control with the Dyson there. And turn that off. There. Bring that through. And again, making sure that we always have that pop in there. And that's really nice. That's good. A bit more on the ends. Can everyone hear me okay? Still? I hope so. The plastic. I'm just going to do it this way. And there. Uh, we're just going to cross and wrap it like that. So it's nice and easy. Okay. Let's do another section. Lots of requests. I can't accept anyone in on the live tonight. Um, but please leave your chat there for me. And we'll get to those as we go along. We'll take another section. And again, let's bring that so that you can see better. Now, it's quite a big section, but we can still paint it. We're going to paint both sides on this one. So we're going to go up. See, I've got lots of control in there. And then we're going to take a bit more. That's it. Take a bit more product. So always go back to your board. That's nice. See that deep, lovely deep V? That's the natural hair. It's as important as the hair that you don't paint and then you lift up and there's still nothing underneath, right? So it's really, really important. And then we're gonna go down, we're gonna go lift up, keeping that tension tight all the way. That's it. Bit more, because I want a little bit more pop here, especially around the face. 
Everybody wants to be brighter. It's summertime, right? There we go. Nice. There, just make sure you work that product through the ends. And don't forget the ends, right? It's like, you don't want darker ends and lighter midsection, so it's really important. You can just paint that off, that's nice. That's cool, wipe my hands on my wet cloth. Let's just have a quick look in here. There you see, really, really nice. So relaxing, it is. <laughs> everyone says it's relaxing to watch. I sort of go into the zone, right? I just go into a zone. I don't know what happens to me. When I'm foiling, I can do the grocery shop in my head. But when I'm painting, I'm afraid I can't do anything except just paint. This top section, we're gonna split into two. I'm gonna repeat that. And you can just brush it through with your brush. Brush it through with your tint brush. There you go, that sounds better. And here, that's nice. And I think bring it this way, even better. And we're just gonna still take that scoop. This hair that you leave out is gonna create shadows and contrast for you, so that's important too. And we're gonna go up. And you wanna make sure that that blend here, more than anywhere, it should be good all the way around. But you know, this is where you want it to be important because this is where the client's gonna see it. No point hiding. There, nice blend through there, really pretty. I'm gonna bring that up, I'm gonna add some pop to it. There we go, that's a nice blend. And then saturate, saturate. That's called palm painting. So we're doing balayage, a super soft balayage paint with a little bit of palm painting on the ends to give us that extra summer pop. And I'm using Daveness Liberty Lightener, which is a Clay-like consistency, guys, which I love. Um, but it gives me up to eight levels of lift. Pretty amazing. There we go. Let's put a bit more product on there. You can see here, it's just not quite enough on there. So that's it. And then the last piece on this side. And I'm just gonna make sure that you can see can I see? Just there. Let's turn that around a little bit now, and then you can see a bit more. And you can see how everything's connecting through. Load that product on. All right, we need a bit more, a bit more product. That's it. Yeah, see? Feather. It feels a bit heavy. You can just break it up with the back of your tint brush. But what we don't want is any lines in there to ruin the whole look because you want to be able to blow dry the hair straight and curly. And if you look at some of the looks at the moment, they're sort of, you know, like John's done this one, it's quite airy. Um, so it's very sort of fresh and sort of undone but done. Uh, I know that's a bit weird. But, uh, you know, you're not hiding behind a rigid curl or anything, so... And I love that. I love that sort of fresh, modern feel to everything. Um, but, you, but if you blow dry it super curly, you can sometimes hide some of those mistakes. Not intentionally, obviously, but... So it's nice when it's blow dried smooth and you get to see all of it. I always ask people to blow dry smooth in my class so you can see the journey. That's nice, that feels great. Let's have a quick look here. You see? That's how lovely it is to work with. Right, let's put a bit of plastic over that. Thank you. I remember that this is um, biodegradable and it's made of corn, okay? Which I just think is really fascinating. Let's tilt her head up. Now, if it's a client, obviously I might not be pushing her head that way. But, got to do what we've got to do for the camera, hey? Here we go. Let's do this side. I'm going to do the front. And then we will I will finish her off afterwards. 
But again, you just want to make sure that you've clipped that up the way there, right? Which is really important. You can see how your gloves get a little bit messy because of the palm painting. So it's really important that um, we we have gloves and a wet towel. Now, here we go. So again, that's nice, right? You ready? Get ready, here. So you can ease up to the root, which is lovely. And then we start at the bottom, keeping that tension tight and it don't want to let it go. So sometimes you sort of, it might feel like you're pulling the hair really tight and the client might be super tender, but if you let that flop, you can't paint on it. So it's really, really important that you keep that tension tight. Because if that paint goes wrong, then you can't say, well, you didn't have the ten I wasn't allowed to take, keep your head tension tight, right? Or the product wasn't mixed properly. It's all down to you. Here we go. There. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Then bring that through, and then we're going to just do some palm on those ends. Good. And then we're gonna just pop a little bit of cotton underneath it, just to drop around the face. I've got a little bit of cotton on my board. Drop that there. Oh, look what I did. Let's do the next piece. And again, follow the hair. So we're gonna go, let's just lift this out of the way a bit. I'm going to take this piece here. Oh, that's it. That's great. And I'm just going to move that out of the way. So take this little clip and just push that out of the way. So you're always prepared. That looks nice. go and that's going to give you these lovely ribbons of blonde around the front and then we're going to do this here and then just palm paint that ends through which is nice cotton underneath that front piece there and then onto the last bit of the front this is where you want to have a little bit of symmetry so again this piece is the piece that's going to pop for us let's bring that here let's bring her down a little bit for you that's up Slightly three dimensional. And then work that through. And that piece will go like that. And that comes into the next piece. Good. Let's pull that. Thank you. And there. That's good. So we've done the front, and that correspond matches. And then we're just going to work through the sides. And I'm going to bring this right round the other way for you. Hold on, we'll turn around. Glad you're enjoying this. 
So much easier to paint. Yeah, lots of things going on in there for everyone, which is really cool. And I'm going to just grab a little bit more product. I'm going to go here. And you can see, so load. Just easy. And it's a super soft look. Which is really nice. Not everything has to be exaggerated and harsh. It's really nice when it's super, super pretty, super commercial. And then bring that through. And again, still nothing underneath. Just pop that through here. And there. Nice. And again, just think about what you did the other side. I'm not saying you have to, you know, match it, but you kind of want to balance it. That's nice. I just go on to the next piece. Put a little bit of plastic over that there. Wrap that around the front. That's it. That protects everyone. Just wipe that for you. And here we go. We'll just do two more sections. You probably want to do three in real life. Um, but we'll just do two more here for you. Maybe I'll just do this last one. Remember this one you can do a little bit bigger, which was kind of cool. So I'm going to take that. There we go. Make sure you load that product on and then feather it up. We're just going to go in that middle section here. So let's soften that all. Nice. And obviously you want to just make sure that it's got a lovely blend in it. Just a little bit more. That big piece. Turn that round for you. Right, and then we just work our way through the top. I feel like I'm running out of a bit of time on here. I got too excited talking about the product today, but that's okay. Pop that on there. And then we just put a little bit of plastic on there. And you can see how you can blend that through. So, you'd carry on with the last section through there. And then, shampoo. Now, I shampoo with my heart of glass, which always makes me want to sing a song. Um, I've got some here for you. And this helps with the bonding. It's got bonding technology in it as well. So the, the pre-lightening's got bonding in it as well. So it makes it nice and strong and healthy. Um, and then we glaze. And I love this color, 1021. It's really, really pretty. And like I said, it's like a sheer. So it, because it's liquid and it's acidic and the developer's acidic, it's great, closes the cuticle creates shine, right? Everybody wants shiny, healthy hair. There, same doll head, same color, similar haircut, because nobody can do a haircut or a paint the same way, but I love it, look at this. So we've got some really nice pieces through the front in that. You can see those lovely ribbons of blonde. Let's bring that light over just a little bit. Yeah, that's it, there. Lovely, so that gives you that. And then here we've got that too, which I think is really, really special. 